So this is Karen, and she is a designer <laughs> for Knit Picks. And um, we are going to film today about darning, darning eggs for, for hand-knit socks. Mm -hmm. And originally, yeah, we had a customer ask us to carry these, and I thought it was kind of silly, because <laughs> I've never darned a sock in my life. But Karen is going to explain why it's so important. Yes. <laughs> so, And you brought some examples, didn't oh, you? Oh, yes. Um, I make pretty much about 80% of the socks I wear I made because they are just the most wonderful thing in the world, and anyone <laughs> who knits socks will probably agree with that. Yeah. Um, and of course, when you wear a hand-knit sock, you get holes in them. It just sort of happens. Um, and so, since I love my socks, I get attached to them, I learned how to darn, and I found that it was one of the best things in the whole world, because then my favorite hot pink socks, you right know, here, I can wear which them we again. have right here, yes. Yeah, Lovely. and so, so I have a range here of the amazing amounts of blowouts that I have in my <laughs> socks, um, and it's all different stages of, uh, going from this one, which you probably tiny, can't see tiny. there, Should it's not even in? a hole yet. It's about to be a hole, and this is when you really oh, want to yeah. darn. There it's it not is. a hole yet, but yeah. you know it's going to go. Uh, to, whoops, I got stuck on something, and the yarn oh, broke. Oh, no. And, yeah, this was either I kicked something or... Oh! <laughs> That is an unusually placed hole, too. Yes, yeah. and there's certain kinds of problems that you face with a hole yeah. like that as well, uh, to just the yarn wore out. And yep. you got a little hole, this and is then... probably the most common kind. This is absolutely the most common kind. Right, your toe or your heel. Yep, yep. and then uh, if you're like me and you're dumb enough to wear the, the sock again after it got the hole uh -oh. in it, because you're thinking, oh, it won't get any bigger, then you have oh, these. Oh, the monster. The monster. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought, oh, it's just a small hole. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, and with so, one day's wearing, it's ten times uh, oh, bigger. Oh, this was probably about ten minutes yeah. after after I put it on, after it had a hole in it. Oh, so. <laughs> sad. Yeah, that was a big mistake on my part. So, um, pretty much what I'll be doing is showing how to fix all of these. Great. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to darn, and the traditional method is... Um, it's what I would think of as old school. You basically would create a weaving frame going up the rows and across the stitches around the hole and then uh, using a big thick yarn needle and the original yarn that you knit your sock in, you'd actually weave across the hole. Okay. So why I don't use that technique is that to me it just doesn't match. It doesn't look, it's, it is, it's not knitting essentially. It's, right. Yeah. Okay. So I like to try to hide the hole as best I can, right. especially if it's in a place like this one, on which is toe. right on the yeah. top on the toe. Um, I like to try to hide it in. So what I use is Swiss darning, okay. and that is basically a duplicate stitch. Oh, and, um, that sounds so much easier. Yeah, I know. Once you say <laughs> that, it sounds a lot easier. Uh, it's the same technique as grafting, like okay. knit grafting. It's the same technique as duplicate stitch. It's just oftentimes there's a big hole involved right. uh, that you have to make sure it's stabilized and things like that. Uh, and there's uh, another technique that I like to use in the case of a giant hole like this, which is essentially you patch it by re-knitting over the top of it. Um, okay. Now, in most cases, I would suggest that if you do have a hole like this, you actually would uh, pick up your stitches around the, uh, the entire heel, cut the heel off and re-knit it. Yeah. And, of course, you can only do that if you do mitered or afterthought heels. Right, not uh, regular heel flaps. Yeah, heel so, flaps. so okay. the reason why I, I'm going to show you how to do the, the re-knitted piece is because you can use that anywhere. You can use it uh -huh. under the arm of a sweater. You can use it, um, you know, if you're making baby pants, you can use it in the seat of the pants. You can right. use it anywhere. So um, it doesn't matter what kind of knitting you have. You can always pick up and re-knit. Okay. It does rely on uh, having a little bit of that yarn original yarn leftover, left over. which so, I don't always do. So yeah. this one won't match because I want to. <laughs> it's a good thing it's on the heel. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's underneath the heel too. Right. Um, but I would highly recommend when you're knitting your socks, always save some Keep yarn. a little leftovers. Keep a lot of leftovers yeah. if you're me and you have big holes all the time. Um, so I would very highly recommend, uh, especially if you knit from the toe up, it really helps because then you get to a certain point point, you're like, okay, well after this, after I bind off, there's still a little ball left over. Right. That's exactly how this 
little right. ball came to be. It was just leftovers. Good. So, so you can't be like me and use up every last scrap of yarn. Yeah. Which is my tendency. And that's exactly I what learn. I did with these. It's exactly what I did with yeah. these. This was made out of scrap yarn. Oh, so you didn't have much to start with. So I didn't have much yeah. to start with. So basically I knit until I was through the yarn. Mm -hmm. And now I have a hole. And so now I'm going to uh -oh. have an odd colored patch in there. So. Okay. But that's all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna we're gonna cut this up into segments. So yep. we're gonna move to a, a different video, and you're gonna show us Swiss darning, right? Yep. Swiss okay. Swiss darning is first. Sounds good. <laughs> 